Hey guys, so today I want to talk to you about transition metals, that family that I kind of skipped over in the last video. So here, if you look at the periodic table, uh, we have all of these families and they each have specific charges that they're going to have, sort of a, a common thing about that family. But then we get the transition metals and the inner transition metals. Now, um, I just kind of skipped over them and said we'll deal with them later. Well, it's later. The reason why I skipped over them is because the elements in here, because they're kind of filling in the D as you go around, um, and those Ds don't really want to be there. As you start taking away valence electrons, some of those Ds start popping up into the, the their spots. And so because of that little quirk of the transition metals with, that are filling in those Ds, these can have multiple positive charges. For example, iron can have a charge of positive two or it could have a charge of positive three. Um, vanadium can have a charge of positive three, positive four, positive five. I mean, basically pick almost any element in here and it will not only not follow a pattern that we can kind of easily deal with, it will also have multiple charges for the same element which just makes them a big headache. So how do we deal with this? Well, the transition metals, it has to do with naming them. Okay, when dealing with the ions for these transition metals, uh, when we name them, we're gonna use Roman numerals as part of the name, um, and we're gonna put it after the name of that metal ion, and that Roman numeral will represent the charge of that metal ion. So we are basically including the charge as part of the name, all right? Um, so instead of just saying like iron oxide, we're going to say iron two oxide using a Roman numeral for that two. The two tells us that it would be a charge, a positive charge of two for the iron since it's a part of that transition metal section. Now we're only going to do this for the transition metals. Real quick, let's go over the, the Roman numerals here. So here are Roman numerals. Uh, we have Roman numeral one two, three, four. Okay, four is actually, basically it's one less than five is kind of how this works. V is five, okay? And then six would be one more than five. All right, six, seven, eight. Let me go down to nine. Nine is one less than 10, and 10 is X, okay? 11 would be one more than 10. 12, two more than 10, so on and so forth. So there's a pattern here with the way that the Romans numeraled their numbers. Okay, it goes one, two, three, and then one before five, five, one after five, two after five, three after five, one before 10, 10, one after 10, two after 10. It's kind of the pattern here. So those are the Roman numerals. And when we have these Roman numerals, they do not represent the ratio, okay? not the ratio, they represent the charge. All right, we're being very specific to use Roman numerals here because we use regular numbers for ratios and we're gonna use Roman numerals as part of these names for charges, okay? Positive charges always, because they're metal. So let me show you a few examples. I've got two examples here. Uh, the first one, if we were to actually name this, it would be called sodium fluoride. This is just like we did before. Okay, that's because we know the charge on sodium. It is part of the alkali metals family. So we just name it sodium. Okay, and then we got the fluorine attached to it, that ion. So fluoride. Change the ending to ide still. Now with the iron, though, iron is a transition metal. So its name has a charge included with it. Okay, it's the Roman numeral 2, II. Um, and then we have iodine, so iodide, iron, two, iodide is what we would name this, and the two represents the charge on the iron. So if we want to write the formulas for these, knowing the names, okay, I'd have to look up the charges. Remember, uh, going into the periodic table, uh, here's sodium, it's part of the alkali metals, so it is a positive one charge. Here is fluorine, it is a halogen, so it's a negative one charge. Then we get to the iron, don't know what its charge is based on the pattern on the periodic table. You have to use whatever charge it has in its name. Okay, that's why it's part of the name. Then we have iodine that's going to be attached to it, and that is a halogen again, so negative one. So if I go back to my problem here, input these charges, positive one and 
negative one for the sodium and fluorine. And then for the iron, excuse me, let me finish this problem here. Um, so positive one and negative one, since they're the same charge, positive and negative, they equal each other, ratio is one to one. So the for formula for this one would be NaF, just like we were doing before. When we get to the iron though, since we don't know its charge just by looking on the periodic table, it's part of the name, it's right there, two. All right, so its charge is positive two. Now the iodine, we can look that up, we just did, it is a negative one. So in this case, it's a positive two charge, negative one charge, just like we did before, it's just the same. Now that we know the charge on this transition metal, it's the same as we did before, okay? That's the only difference is we don't know the charge without looking at the name. It is a one to two ratio, one of the irons, two of the iodines, okay? So FeI2 would be the formula of iron two iodide. Now note, the two refers to the charge on the iron. It does not refer to how many irons I have. It is not Fe2I, it is FeI2, because it's referring to that charge on iron, not how many irons I have. Be careful of that, okay? So let's try another one here. Iron three oxide. Iron can have a two charge or it can have a three charge. So that iron three, one, two, three, I, 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 tells me that it is iron with a plus three charge. There's a plus two in the other one, but now it's a plus three. So iron multiple charges from compound to compound. I mean, you can have different ones. Oxygen is what's paired with here. And oxygen is in the oxygen family and that always has a negative two charge. Okay, so we just looked that one up on the periodic table. So this is that positive two, negative three situation again. So this is actually a two to three ratio in order to equal those out. So this would be Fe2O3. That's iron three oxide. Okay. Copper. All right, copper, transition metal here. Uh, copper two sulfide. The two tells me that it is a plus two charge on the copper. Okay, positive two. The sulfur, I looked that up on the periodic table. It's in the oxygen family, so that would be a negative two charge. Positive two and negative two, those equal each other. So this would be a one to one ratio. So the formula here, CUS. Quick note, copper two sulfide, the ratio, there is not even a single two there, okay? Again, that Roman numeral does not tell you how many coppers you have. It does not tell you how many sulfurs you have. That Roman numeral tells you the charge on copper. That is the most common mistake people make is when they're doing this, they say, oh, it's copper two, so it's gotta be Cu2S. No, don't do it, okay? It is the charge, and you use the charge to figure out what the ratio is, okay? So here's another one, copper again. This time it is not copper two, it's copper one. Just a single I, copper one nitride, okay? So this would have a positive one charge on the copper. And then the nitrogen, nitrogen family, negative three charge on that one when we look it up on the periodic table. So this one would be a three to one ratio. Three of the coppers with a plus one to the one negative three of the nitrogen. So it'd be Cu3N, okay, again, Copper one nitride, we have three of the coppers there. The one does not refer to how many coppers we have. All right, so that is how the transition metals work, okay? The charge of the transition metal is going to be a part of the name. So you can figure out the formula from that. Now there is one other little section of the periodic table that can have multiple charges. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the periodic table here. This section right here. All right, this column when I went over before, I, I kind of explained that this is right in the middle. And so you can have either a positive four or a negative four, depending on if it's a metal or a non-metal. Well, it's actually even more complicated than that because everything in here, um, they all end with their valence electrons being uh, two of them S's and two of them P's. Okay, so S2, P2. So for example, um, 10 would end up 5s2, 5p2. So that would be its valence electrons there at the end on the outermost energy level. Um, and some weird things happen with this. Because it has two and two, you think that when it loses electrons, it would lose all of its valence electrons, the s's and the p's. 
But the metals in here, they don't always just lose both of them. They sometimes just lose one of them. So sometimes they just lose the P's, and so they keep their S's, and then they would be A plus 2. So the metals in this column, in this column only, okay, that would be tin, lead, and fluorivium. There's only three metals there. They could be plus four, like that's kind of their normal for the column here, but they could also be plus two if they only lose their P's and not their S's. So this gets a little tricky. So we also include just for these three elements in this section, we treat them just like the transition metal section. Okay, we include a Roman numeral as part of the name for these specific metals, just so we know whether it's two or four. Okay, so going back here, I actually have two examples, both lead. All right, this first one is lead two oxide, and the second one is lead four oxide. So those numbers there tell me if it's a positive two or a positive four, even though it's not in the transition metals. Okay, it's in the copper or the carbon family. Sorry, um, it will be either two or four, and we include that as part of the name so we know which one we're talking about. It's either two or four. You got to keep that in mind. All right. So lead 2, lead 4. So this first one, we got lead 2 oxide. Okay, lead 4 bromide. Um, that tells you their charges. Positive 2, positive 4. Okay, so the first one we're dealing with plus 2. Second one, positive 4. The oxygen is negative 2 and the bromine is negative 1. We just look those ones up on the periodic table. So for this first one, lead 2 oxide, since this is a positive 2 and a negative 2, same charge, that's a 1 to 1 ratio. All right, so the formula for this would be PBO. The second one, lead four bromide. Okay, positive four, negative one. Well, that is a one to four ratio. So this one would be PBBR4. Okay. Whew. So that is how you deal with the transition metals and these Roman numerals telling you what the charges are. Remember, Roman numeral equals the charge. Okay. Now I want you to try it. So I've got some practice problems here all laid out. I have told you their names. There's Roman numerals there telling you what the charge is on that transition metal ion, the very first one. So for example, cobalt, cobalt three, that is a plus three charge for that cobalt, okay? I'd like you to pause the video right now and figure out what the formulas for all of these are. Pause the video and give it all a try. I'll walk through them here in a second. Okay, you should have an answer by now. If not, pause the video. I really want you to try this before we get going because this can be tricky. Okay, so this first one, it's a positive three charge because it's cobalt three and then chlorine's a negative one. So this is a one to three ratio, so COCl3. The second one, iron two sulfide. So that's a positive two on the iron. Sulfur is a negative two. Okay, so this is a one to one ratio, FeS. Next one, iron 3 iodide. It's a positive 3 on the iron, and then iodine is a negative 1. So this would be a 1 to 3 ratio, FeI3. Next one, copper 2 oxide. It's a positive 2 on the copper, and then oxygen is always a negative 2. So this would be a 1 to 1 ratio, CuO. And this next one's a little tricky. This one is copper 1 oxide. Okay, copper one, so it's a positive one on the copper. Oxygen, just like before, is a negative two. It's always a negative two here. So what makes this one tricky is this is a two to one ratio, two of the coppers, so it's Cu2O, and it's called copper one oxide. Two coppers, even though it's called copper one oxide. Remember that one refers to the charge, not how many you have. Okay, that tricks people up a lot because they think copper one, that's gotta be one of them. No. All right, next one, tin. It's one of those ones in that column, tin, lead, and fluorivium, okay? So you do need to include a Roman numeral for this one. It's tin two chloride. So it's a positive two on the tin, symbol is SN. Chlorine is a negative one. So this would be a one to two ratio, SNCl2. And the last one, tin again, this one's tin four oxide. So positive four on the tin and a negative two on the oxygen. Okay, so because this is positive four and negative two charges, this is a one to two ratio, SNO2. And that is how we figure out the formulas for transition metals. Now, 
there are a few exceptions. Okay, there's four of them. Um, these four transition metals do not use Roman numerals after the name of the metal ion to represent the charge of that metal. So these are basically four exceptions that are in the transition metal family that we don't include Roman numerals after the name. So when you get these, they're not going to have a Roman numeral there because they always form the same positive charge. And so it's kind of like over the years, chemists just started memorizing them instead of having, having to deal with it. Well, is it two? Is it three? Like iron is two or three or four. Well, these ones always form the exact same. So we just have to keep them memorized. We don't include the Roman numerals as part of the name. So here they are. Here's the four. Silver. Silver. Transition metal always forms a positive one ion, period, okay? Cadmium, cadmium always forms a positive two ion, period. Zinc, zinc always forms a positive two ion. And scandium, scandium always forms a positive three ion. So these are the four transition metals that are exceptions to what I just talked about. They will not have a Roman numeral as part of their name. So you need to know what their charges are by memory. So you basically need to memorize the charges of these four elements or write them down and stick them next to your computer. I mean, something, okay? Something so that you're going to be able to remember them, all right? So let's go the other direction. Before I gave you guys a name, and then we figured out the formula based on that name. But what if I give you a formula and ask you to name it? Now, this is actually quite difficult, okay? Naming them before was probably pretty easy. You just name the pieces, but this can be difficult because you got to figure out that Roman numeral in order to name it. So, first one here. This is copper and fluorine, okay? So, just like before, we're going to name the pieces copper and fluorine. Change the ending to ide, so fluoride, okay? So, we've got copper fluoride, um, but we also have to include what the charge is on the copper. Now, how do we figure that out? Well, it has to do with the, the ratio and the charge of the anion, all right? Because we want to know the charge on the cation here. So what's the charge on the anion? It's kind of the, the tricky one here. So the ratio here is one to one. We already know that. I gave you the formula, so it's one to one, okay? The charge on fluorine, look it up on the periodic table, it's negative one, okay? So, Here's where the logic comes into play. If the ratio is one to one and the fluorine is a negative one, that means that the copper has to be the exact same charge as the fluorine, except positive. So that means that this is a positive one copper. Okay, and now that we know that it is a positive one charge on that copper, we can add that Roman numeral. It is copper one fluoride. Okay, let's try another one. Mercury. We got mercury and iodine. Okay, HGI2. So the ratio here is 1 to 2. And we look up iodine's charge. Iodine's charge is negative 1. All right? So if the ratio is 1 to 2 and iodine is a negative 1, and there are two of them, a negative 1 and a negative 1 makes negative 2, all right? Compared to the mercury, which is 1, the only possible charge it could be is positive 2 to cancel out the two negative ones of the iodine. So the charge on this mercury is positive 2. We're looking at the iodine to figure out its charge, right? So naming the pieces, this is mercury and iodine. Change that to iodide, right? So mercury 2, iodide, the 2, Roman numeral 2, charge on the mercury. Let's try another one. Scandium chloride, okay? Scandium chloride, but what's the charge on that chlor uh, scandium? Uh, well, it's a one to three ratio. Chlorine's a negative one. Now, I'm actually being a little tricky here, okay? Negative one, and it's a one to three ratio. So we know, based on looking on this, that that should be a positive three charge, but here's why I'm, I'm tricky, because Scandium is one of those exceptions I just mentioned. Okay, there are four of them. Silver, scandium, zinc, and...
cadmium. I was having a brain fart. I'm sorry. Um, silver, zinc, cadmium, and scanium. Scanium is one of those exceptions. So we're not going to include the Roman numeral here. It's one of those exceptions. We're just going to call it scanium chloride. Whew! Don't you just love the exceptions? They just make things so much easier. All right. So next example, copper and oxygen. Okay, so we got a copper oxide here, but what's the Roman numeral on it? Well, in this case, it is a one-to-one -one ratio there based on that formula, right? It's one of each, copy, it's CuO for the formula. So, <clears throat> the charge on oxygen, typically negative two. Since it's one-to-one, -one, the charge on the copper has to match that, except be positive. So it has to be a positive two charge copper. So this would be copper two oxide, okay? Next one, this is cobalt and sulfur. Okay, so cobalt sulfide, but we have a ratio here of two to three. What's the charge on that co cobalt? So the ratio is two to three, based on the formula. And sulfur, if we look it up, is a negative two. Okay, so this is where it gets a little tricky. Um, what's the charge on the cobalt? Well. We have sulfur, which is a negative two, and then negative two, and then another negative two. That makes six, okay? It's positive, negative six here. So the cobalt has to equal a positive six, and there's only two of them. So positive six, two of them, divide it in half, it's gotta be a positive three for each of them, okay? So the charge on the cobalt, in order to match what we see with the ratio and the charge on the sulfur, positive three. So this would be cobalt, three III sulfide. Lead and oxygen, okay, PbO2. So the ratio here is one to two, and lead is one of those carbon family ones that we do put, include a Roman numeral for, because it can be either two or four, all right? So your choices here are gonna be two or four. Uh, this is a one to two ratio, and oxygen is a negative two charge again. Look it up on the periodic table. So what's the charge on that lead? Well, negative two, negative two, negative four. So there's only one of the lead, so it's gotta be positive four in order to make that one to two ratio that we see. So this is actually lead four oxide, IV for four. This is copper and selenium. So this would be selenide, okay? Um, copper, selenide, but what's the charge on that copper? Well, selenium, it's a one, it's a two to one ratio here based on the formula. Selenium is a negative two charge. So this is a little tricky here. Uh, since selenium is a negative two and it's a two to one, we have two coppers for every one selenium. So that means the copper actually has to have a smaller charge than selenium. It's gotta be positive one because a positive one and a positive one add up to cancel out that negative two of the selenium. So this is actually copper one, copper one selenide. Your turn, I want you guys to try some. So pause the video, I've given you the formulas, you're gonna to need to look up the charges of the anions on the periodic table, use the ratio in that formula, figure out the charge on the cation, okay, the metal, and then name it using a Roman numeral. And don't forget, we have some exceptions there, silver, cadmium, zinc, and scandium. Pause the video and try these. Okay, got an answer? First one. First one here, uh, it is a one to two ratio. Charge on iodine is negative one, so charge on nickel has to be positive two. This is nickel two iodide. Second one, okay? This is a one to one ratio. Oxygen's charge is negative two, that means zinc's charge is positive two, but zinc is one of the exceptions that I mentioned. So this is just zinc oxide, no Roman numeral. Okay, next one, uh, VCL5, that is actually vanadium. This is a one to five ratio. Chlorine, or chlorine is a negative one charge, so that means that vanadium has to be positive five in order to balance that out. So this is vanadium five chloride with a V. Next one, lead and selenium. Okay, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Selenium is negative two, and since it's one-to-one, -one, that means 
It's got to be a positive 2 for the lead. This is lead to selenide. Change the ending to ide. Cu3N, okay, this is a 1 to 3 ratio. Since nitrogen is a negative 3 charge, um, that means that you have to have, since there are three coppers, you have to have a positive 1, positive 1 and positive 1, three of them in order to equal that out. So it's a positive 1 for the copper here. This is copper 1 nitride. Next one, Ni2O3. This is a 2-3 ratio, which means the charges are 3 and 2. You kind of see how that always works. Um, so 2-3, oxygen is the negative 2, which means that the nickel has to be the positive 3. Okay, so this is nickel 3 oxide. And last one here, we have AgCl, that's silver and chlorine, and Ag, silver, is one of those exceptions. Okay, so this is a 1 to 1 ratio, chlorine is a negative 1, silver then be a positive 1, but since it's an exception, we just call it silver chloride. And that is how you name transition metals. Okay, one last thing. Before we came up with this Roman numeral system, we had a different system. We called it, it was the traditional naming, that's what we call it now. Um, so this is sort of the old naming system that we had. Um, I think the Roman numeral system makes a lot more sense, honestly. Even though it's confusing, it makes a lot more sense than what I'm about to talk to you guys about. We do come across the traditional names occasionally, so I'm going to introduce them to you. Um, I actually have some chemicals in the back room at the skull that have the traditional names on them rather than the uh, Roman numeral names. So traditional names of some of these transition metal ions. Um, copper, we had a plus one and a, a plus two, so they used to call them cuprous and cupric. Okay. Iron, we have plus two and plus three, they used to call it ferrous and ferric. Mercury, uh, we had a plus two and a uh, plus one. Mercurius, mercuric, lead, uh, plumbus and plumbic, tin, stannous and stannic. So there is a pattern here. What's going on is, first off, um, we are not using the normal name of the element. Okay, like instead of calling it lead, we called it plumbic. Okay, this is actually the Latin name of the element, which is where the symbol actually gets PB. All right, so we're using the Latin name of these elements, an older older system here. Um, and then they either end in ick or os. Okay? And this happens when we have two different charges, so like plus two and plus four. The ick is the one that goes to whatever the higher charge is, and the os is the one that goes to whatever the lower charge is. All right? So going back here, um, if we look at, say, uh, lead right here, we have plus two and plus four. Those are the two possibilities. So we have plumbis, us, for the lower one, and plumbic for the higher one, the plus four, okay? And that's how this system works. Um, other than that, I, I, like I said, it, the Roman numeral makes more sense to me, but we will come across these. So um, I would prefer to use the, the Roman numeral regular stock system, but the traditional names, I get, you're going to run into them. So like this copper one oxide used to be called cuprous oxide. And copper 2 oxide used to be called cupric oxide. So, and you come across them, so we are going to learn them and try to tell them apart. Um, basically, guys, uh, I'm going to make sure you guys have a chart with these. So, uh, one of the things I want you guys to do today is download this chart, okay? It is a list of common ions. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see this on the camera, but you'll be able to download this, print it, Keep it on your computer. It's a reference chart that you're allowed to use. Uh, right up here, down here at the bottom, is where we have all these transition metals, where I list um, what their stock name is with the Roman numeral, and then I also list right next to it what the uh, traditional old-timey name would be um, right here. I mean, there is a pattern there, but essentially I'm giving you a list of, hey, well, if you've got, say, gold 1, that's Aurus. If you've got gold 3, that's Auric. Okay, so I'm literally telling you, kind of, if you can figure out what the Roman numeral name is, I'm giving you a chart with these traditional names on them. All right? Um, so, yeah, this is something I want you to download so you can use. Make sure you download that, print it off, and keep it handy. That's it for today.